Do you see the slides? Your presenter view. Like we see your notes or like the next, we see like two slides, your main slide and then the, the next slide that will be coming up as well. Oh, wait a second, let me see if I can. Perfect. What about now? That's very good. Okay. Well, my name is Julio Valdez. I'm from the National Research Council, the Digital Technologies Research Center. And this is a joint work with Professor Antonio Poe from the Department of Ecology of the Autonomous University in Madrid. And this is about the use of uh, a combination of machine learning and explainable AI techniques to uh, study the dynamics of water vapor in the troposphere and try to see if it is possible to uncover some changes in the climate behavior. So this is a work that is done using satellite images from the Meteosat satellite, which is uh, operated by the European Space Agency. And it produces images of uh, water vapor in, in a certain wavelength band, which is uh, listed there. Uh, we are going to use some, or we use some machine learning techniques composed of uh, a mixture of unsupervised and supervised methods, including modeling and anomaly and outlier analysis. So I'm going to present the just a short outline of the, the methods, and but most importantly, the results and lessons learned. Here we have two examples of the kind of images produced by this satellite. We were using a collection from 2009 to 2023, early 23. And here we have, well, some, some uh, examples from the December 2009 sources and from the June 2014 so this show just to show the uh, variation of the of the dynamics of the water vapor distribution uh, there were several motivations to try to look into this kind of data one of them is well importantly water vapor is uh, it has five times more greenhouse effect than co2 and moreover it is related to the distribution of rain and the occurrence of droughts and, and floods, which of course, as you know, are very important events that are affecting many different uh, regions of the, of the planet. Uh, however, there is a scarcity of uh, studies that are based on satellite water vapor images, particularly because of the high complexity of the information contained within those images and the, the speed of their changes. At the same time, there were not too many studies oriented to the investigations of the actual dynamics and the patterns at the large scales and how these patterns evolve with time. So uh, we tried to approach these problems with, from a computational salience perspective using a combination of uh, machine lear learning methods, including the use of explainable AI and anomaly and outlier detection techniques. Here we have uh, just like a, a example of the type of, of data and the way in which data was assembled. We had the collection of uh, images produced by the satellite. In this case, we were working with uh, images separated one hour in time. I mean, the sampling interval was one hour. And the conceptual model here was trying to see uh, or to, to conceive these, these changes as the result of some uh, distortion process that an image is, is uh, going through when the atmosphere changes from one time, time stamp to the, to the next. And we try to quantify this change using the state of the art uh, measure which is called the visual information fidelity uh, between consecutive images. 
when we apply this technique to the series of images, we get the time series that is shown on the lower half of the slide, where every point on that series is the visual information fidelity measure between a pair of consecutive images. So this is a way how to try to track the way in which consecutive images are either similar or different and how this uh, evolve with time. So now from there, well, this is just an outline of the kind of techniques that we used, the similarity analysis between images using, as I said, the visual information fidelity. We worked with a series composed of more than 96,000 images between 2009 to 2023. We also applied different model-based anomaly and outlier detection methods. Some of them are listed there. At the same time, we use a collection of supervised techniques, including feature selection with a very uh, a broad repertoire of fil both uh, filter and wrapper, wrapper methods. We use some modeling techniques using deep ant, which is a certain kind of uh, convolutional network, and also LSTM for modeling the, the time series. And in addition, we have uh, different techniques trying to understand the behavior of uh, these models, including permutational variance importance, uh, local interpretable model agnostic explanation, line and also Shapley additive explanations. Uh, uh, as a complementary uh, explainable view, we looked at some Ceteris Paribus profiles. Well, of course, we don't have the time to go through them now, but here we have uh, just a short list of references related to the techniques that were used in the study. Now, we divided the hemisphere that is covered by these images. I forgot to say that the Meteosat uh, produces uh, geostationary images. So they are seeing the same hemisphere all the time. And um, the hemisphere was divided in this sort of tiles that are 20 degrees in latitude, north and south. They are, they are numbered here. And well, in, in, the, in the nutshell, for each of these tiles, you can produce a series like this, only considering the part of the image that is covered by this tile or, or mask. And now when you integrate all the information coming from the different tiles and you try to, to create the model, and that model is investigated from the point of view of its internal behavior, we found the variation of permutational variable importance where each variable now represents the behavior within one of these, uh, of these tiles. And uh, it was possible to see that the, uh, there were three main areas which are highlighted here in color and, and they are uh, pointed to by, by these arrows which appeared to be the most important from the point of view of defining the overall similarity between consecutive satellite images. And as you see the contribution or importance of what are the changes going on, in, on the diff, within the different uh, masks steadily declines until there is a collection that simply has practically no uh, contribution. Now, when we look at the two most important masks, namely 11 and 27, we see that uh, the variation in time highlights a certain trait that happens at the year 2015 that is common for both. It is this uh, trait here and here. And when you look at the behavior of the importance function before and after, you appreciate the difference. And for example, here you see that 
prior 2015, the trend is steadily going down. However, after 2015, there is a raise and then every, everything happens at a much higher importance level. Here on the other hand, you see that after 2016, the behavior of importance is even more regular with much sharper variations than before. So that was something that started to highlight that there was some, some, some sort of regime, cha regime change uh, observed. Now, when we look at the uh, variables that are uh, controlling the behavior of these models, we compare, for example, the behavior in 2013 with the behavior of 2015 when we are observing this, uh, this uh, change. And here we are highlighting the distribution of the most important tiles or the most important masks within the, within the hemisphere and which were the variables that were like important in 2013 that either gain importance or lose importance or were simply disappearing from the repertoire of importance uh, variables that that you find in 2015, for example. And here we see certain variables, it means certain areas within the planet that were important in 2013, but they were not important in 2015. Some others that were not important in 2013, but were very important in, in 2015, and variables that simply uh, dropped or, or lose. Uh, importance and you see that uh, interestingly there are some variables that that are new that were not important before and others that actually they lost quite a lot of, of importance and this is what is seen from the point of view of the lime explainer this is what is seen by the Shapley explainer you see that most of the time variables they just lost importance some new appears, but at the very bottom. But if we look at the top important uh, variables, while the two most important, they stayed, but some of them, they lost importance. And one which was particularly not important in 2013, extraordinarily gained importance and became third in rank. So those were things that were simply highlighted when you start putting these models under the microscope. Now, the Ceteris Paribus technique was used for comparing February 2013 and February 2015, the same months, but in, in those two different years prior, prior to 2015 and on 2015. And interestingly, here we see how the prediction probability changes with the selection of the different thresholds. And uh, interestingly, there is a case where one of the seasons uh, reversed the relative order of importance when compared 2013 with 2015, particularly uh, autumn. It happened that it was an inversion for season three, which is uh, autumn. I mean, season one was spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And we see that in particular, autumn was reversed. If we look at the order of the seasons, how they came from the point of view of probability between 2013 and 2015, in the particular case of autumn, there was a reverse, a reversal. So that also uh, points towards the same idea that something happened when we go to the, say, quote unquote, boundary of 2015. Now, looking at this process from the point of view of uh, anomaly and outlying, outlier the, the detection, the models that are describing this series, and in particular the residuals of these models, were analyzed from the point of view of the anomalous or outlying behavior. And once the anomalies were uh, found using six different methods, then a window of length one year was slid through the whole 
time series producing an anomaly count, an actual anomaly count. And here we have the original series and here we have the anomaly counts as produced by two different methods. And again, we may see that after 2015, the trend in the anomaly count that was producing uh, relatively uh, few anomalies experience an, a change and that trend, trend which was a decreasing trend changed completely and become uh, in, in the two cases actually uh, an increasing trend. So it means that when we look at the number of anomalies that we see in the in the model deviations from this series, from 2015 onwards, we see an increasing number of model anomalies. So in the overall, the <clears throat> explainable AI approaches, they were capable of finding clues about temporal variations in the world of vapor dynamics. And in particular, the patterns are strongly associated to events occurring in, in only a few regions of the hemisphere. That is very interesting. Uh, I forgot to say that most of these events are in between uh, the equator and uh, 20 degrees latitude south. There is also a change in the behavior of the permutational variable, the variable importance from 2015 onwards. There is also a change that was sensed by the Lyme and Chapley explanation scores. And uh, in the case of the most influential variables when they were compared to previous years, also for the year 2015, another technique, in this case, the Ceteris paribus detected an inversion in the probability predictions for autumn versus winter. And anomaly detection also flagged a change in 2015, this, this time from the point of view of the trend in the yearly number of, of anomalies that were found when looking at the behavior of, of these methods. In summary, all these findings, they demonstrate the potential of, of machine learning in general and um, explanatory AI in particular, when trying to gain insight into what is really going on. And you may see that if you look at the original series, it is very difficult for the naked eye to try to, uh, to, to detect uh, this kind of event. So this is again, something else that highlights the, the importance and the possibilities of machine learning in this, in this sense. Well, uh, that's what I wanted to, to share with you and uh, thank you very much.